My name is Dr. Tim Ball. I'm a climatologist. I have a PhD in climatology from the Queen Mary College, the University of London, England. And I've been studying climate both with my nine years in the Canadian Air Force, where it was essential to flying, and then after that at the university. So it's essentially been uh, the whole theme of my career. Initially called climate skeptics, I said, but, but all scientists are skeptics. If you're not a, a skeptic, you're not a scientist. And, and then when that didn't work, then they came out with the charge that we were climate change deniers. And I remember when I was first called a denier, and it was in the Times of London and England. And, um, and of course, the word denier was clearly deliberately chosen because of the Holocaust connotations of that term. So it, it, was, it was not only a, a charge that you were ignoring the truth, but you were doing it in, in a very evil way. And uh, of course, I laugh about that now because my whole career has been anything but a climate change denier. I've spent my career trying to educate people to how much climate change is naturally. So I'm anything but a denier, but of course that, that uh, is part of the policy. CO2 is not causing the climate change. What is? What are the major driving factors? And um, so they're essentially the ones that are left out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It, it's unbelievable to me that they can come out and ignore the sun. I mean, everybody knows the sun goes in, it gets cool. You notice that, right? You have an eclipse, the temperature drops and the birds start to get excited and so on. And, and uh, when you look at the, the seasonal changes with the sun, how you can suggest that the, the sun is not a factor is, is really quite remarkable. The cosmic radiation coming from space, the amount reaching the Earth is affected by the strength of the sun's magnetic field. So the magnetic field of the sun is almost like a, a gateway controlling the cosmic radiation reaching the Earth. The magnetic strength of the sun is also related to the number of sunspots. So they are, are directly related to changes within the inner structure of the sun. The amount of cosmic radiation reaching the lower atmosphere creates more cloud. Right? And, and cloud forms, you need to have what are called condensation nuclei. That is, little particles around which water can change from water vapor gas into water droplets, minute particles that are visible in the form of clouds. We've known for a long time that there was more cloud than the amount of particles in the atmosphere, because we assumed it was clay particles and salt particles that were creating this condensation process, um, but there was this gap. We now realize, of course, it's the cosmic radiation that's doing it. So what the cosmic radiation is doing, controlled by the magnetic field of the sun, is putting up, a, it's like putting up a screen in the greenhouse and blocking out the sunlight. And of course, that then affects the temperature of the Earth. That's why there's a relationship between the sunspots and the temperature on the Earth. So we now know the mechanism but they completely ignore that. 